Um, now, Marone, you've got quite the, the set up there. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit as to how, how this whole thing works. Sure, absolutely. It's a two-part system that's built from the ground up for full augmented reality. Um, we have a stereoscopic pair of glasses that's showing me the uh, information at a 23-degree at a, at a field of view smack in the middle of uh, my viewport. And you have a really low latency tracking of my hands uh, that's occurring with uh, the help of that camera that you see uh, on top. Um, now you can see that it's it's pretty fast, uh, low latency tracking. With all of the graphics being rendered live, it's still I can't escape from that blob. That means you could start an entirely new class of games, uh, like boxing match against a virtual Muhammad Ali, because I'm tracking the hands and also the floor. So I could superimpose a sort of a, a digital opponent uh, uh, on the floor. Um, you can shoot zombies with a uh, superimposed uh, gun on your hand, and the zombies would be walking in your room. It's just a, an entirely new world for developers, and anyone with a little bit of Unity experience can get on their feet really quickly with our SDK and just dev. So just just so I'm clear, so you're wearing a, a transparency. I take it these are glasses. There's a screen there, yep. and but I know it looks black on the camera, but in actuality, it's something you can see right through. Uh, am I correct? Yes, yes. Uh, it is a see-through display. Um, we're uh, starting off to make it sort of really immersive. Uh, we're starting off with a video feed that's being displayed on top of the display, but we could, you could sure see through that video uh, to the real world, and um, yeah. So, so you have um, uh, augmented reality. And the camera, I take it, that's responsible for c capturing your gestures and, and, and seeing the world? Absolutely. So it's capable of tracking fingers, faces, walls, anything that allows you to sort of achieve that paradigm of the world is your hardware and you, it's just waiting for software to be placed on top of it. Excellent. Excellent. Now, I know in, in the VR world, yep. the, the big word that they seem to be fighting against is latency. Yep. Um, do, you, do you have similar challenges with augmented reality? Is there, are there certain things that you're working to overcome to make augmented reality work? Absolutely. So uh, latency is, is even more difficult uh, in the augmented reality world because we have to deal with a uh, different kind of latency. So you have tracking latency in the virtual reality world, which is uh, more in the, in the realm of Oculus. Um, and they've worked uh, very, very hard and did a great job at lowering uh, that. So when you move your head, these gyros and accelerometers uh, adjust the real world at a great uh, pace. But what they don't have to deal with is really the, 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 the difficult task, which is called translational latency. It's the difference between the real world's uh, finger motion and the finger motion on the screen as well as the graphics on the screen. And that's a really hard problem that requires a lot of innovative solutions. Now, what, what would you say about computing power? I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of variables at work here. Seeing the information, you know, capturing it, translating it, displaying it, and then sure. there's this whole cycle. Well, it, it, can you elaborate a little more as to what kind of processing power you see going into something like this? Yes, absolutely. Um, so suffice it to say that Moore's Law is on our side at this point. Uh, we're, 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 we're envisioning a six-month uh, tethered to your laptop phase so that our developers um, can create uh, really, really cool demos and sort of test them live by just sort of hitting return and seeing the product of their work uh, displayed on the glasses immediately. Um, and then six months later, we already have embedded devices. Uh, I can't go into too many details, but very, very soon, it's all inside the frame. The frame is much smaller. Uh, so we're already working with a, a half, the, half the weight, half the size uh, frame moving forward. And um, it just goes into this era where people are wearing des beautiful designery glasses with huge fields of view and achieves uh, sort of uh, my goal of natural computation, bringing people out back into the world, having exciting information displayed everywhere, um, and making the world cool again. No, we're. I, I, I mean, I'm going to bring up a, another brand name that starts with the letter G. Yeah. That they've made a lot of headway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but you know they've had a bit of a, a, a kind of a pseudo backlash where they positioned their product that you know you could record the world around you, right. and not everybody likes that idea. Um, 
Are there certain things or certain ramifications you're finding with augmented reality that weren't anticipated? Um, so we, uh, so I, I, we, I spoke about having a harder job uh, relative to companies uh, that are doing virtual reality. Uh, we actually, surprisingly, have an easier job uh, relative to Google in that sense because this device is, uh, in its first phase, it's bulky, right? It's not a social device. I don't want to take it outside. In fact, I can't take it outside because the camera, uh, the IR camera, the sun rays intersect with it in a way that distorts the tracking. So that's perfect because I wanted to invent the computer, the PC, the personal experience, the indoor experience before you take it outside and socialize with it. I think that Google has to fight Moore's law a lot more aggressively by creating these tiny, tiny CPUs that can, you know, not handle the kind of processing required for this kind of beautiful and, um, you know, intense uh, computing. Uh, so. To sum up, our job is easier because it's an indoor device, so and it's personal. So I'm not tracking what you're saying right now. Um, what I'm doing is sort of creative activities. Uh, we have architects uh, uh, building their 3D models and sort of an artist sculpting uh, sculpt sculptures in 3D. Um, and you know, we're not we're not at the phase where we have to uh, handle that stuff yet. Well, when we say yet, I mean yet can happen a lot faster than than we realize. I mean, right. we're if we're following Moore's law, the processing power is continually going to increase. I, I, I mean, do you you're starting it off as an internal device, but do you do you see right. a future where augmented reality is on our, you know, if you I think you mentioned earlier in the presentation, they're going to be like a pair of sunglasses, sure. if I heard correctly. Sure. So where do you see this headed as far as the ramifications of AR? Absolutely. Uh, I can't comment exactly on our roadmap, but what I will say is that AR is indeed going to be pervasive. It's 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 intended to be something that's all around you all the time, uh, at all hours of the day. So yes, indeed, when you're outside, um, privacy evolves. That's the bottom line. Okay, uh, when Facebook came out, people were freaking out about putting a lot of information uh, that's private about themselves on the on their walls and on their uh, information tabs. And with time and with sort of social adaptation, people become more relaxed about this stuff. Uh, I envision the same thing happening to the world of augmented reality, and Google's going to be the first to have to deal with it. Okay, well, I mean, something to keep in mind with Facebook, people started off putting their stuff in and then they started to realize about the privacy ramifications right. after the fact. Right. So, so, I mean, with AR, I think with, with Google, I think people are learning to start to take care of these things earlier rather than than, than later. Yeah. But um, you know, Google's kind of positioned itself as saying we, we want to re record the world around us. Do you right. do you envision you know uh, Meta View taking that stance that we okay. want to record the world? A really great way to sum up the difference between us is as follows. So I say this in the best way possible. Okay, Google wants to make us into cyborgs, uh, where automatic sort of cognitive processes are happening all the time. Turn left at the next intersection, turn right. Things that are kind of annoying to think about. They're just, you know, let Google handle it, okay? Uh, when is my flight arriving? Notifications, things that are sort of cognitively uh, at the bottom of the stack. What MetaView is trying to do is allow you to be creative, okay? It's the things at the top of the cognitive stack, like let me build a beautiful building, let me build a house, let me play an amazing computer game that's very computationally intensive indoors, okay? So it's a different mission statement, really. Okay. Now, I find uh, with technologies like this, it, it, and it's so easy to take for granted, sure. like the, the cell phone and the smartphone. Like I, I think I, I, I joked with you earlier that it took me a really long time to get to get my first cell phone. I mean, I, I you know, and I, I'm scared to announce publicly how late it took me to get a cell phone. Sure. But immediately, within 24 hours, I turned into one of those people where I'm walking with my cell phone, and, yeah, and you know, yeah. the, the people that you used to make fun of, I became that guy. Right. So, in the case of augmented reality, do you do you think that it's going to create certain new social norms that we hadn't considered before? I'm absolutely positive it will. Um, I'm so positive because of the exact example that you've used and a number of other examples from technology. Uh, people are reluctant to make a step and when they make a step, when they're going to start buying their Google glasses and their meta glasses, 
they're going to realize that the world is simply um, more augmented when you have these devices on and it's going to be difficult to take them off and for the nostalgics among us it's going to be a, a hard process to part from the way things were beforehand um, but you know I'm a neuroscience student as well as a computer science student and I'm hoping to do the most cognitively responsible thing so I'm not going to throw ads in your face wherever you go I'm not going to you know make it a cluttered experience we're trying to make a beautiful efficient non-invasive uh, way of operating through your world and so really what I'm trying to do is bring a lot of the social norms and the things from the olden days into this new era um, and I think that's going to make people a lot it's going to make it a lot easier for people to adapt now we're at the level up gaming showcase now this this event is all about you know students showcasing their work they have they've been untouched by the corporate video game industry, so I, you know, so what what would you like to see happen from from students and independent game developers? Like, what what what, what kind of exciting things would you like to see in augmented reality? So the students and my my positioning here at Level Up today is is very very core to Meta's um, technology. Uh, we created an SDK that's super easy to use, and we don't believe. Uh, so when I, when I go to a VC, VC meetings, they're always like, "What's your killer app, man? What's your killer app?" You know, I don't want to invest in anything unless I know that it's so de-risked that you're just building one app, one game, and I refuse to do so. Uh, the reason I refuse to do so is because at the beginning, when we just did a soft launch on the on the website, 500 devs wrote, "I'm dying to get these pairs of glasses. I want to build an app for surgery. I want to save lives. I want to have the CT scan." Rotate it, being able to be rotated by the by the surgeon with his dirty fingers while he's performing surgery, that's going to save lives. I'm an architect. I want to build the 3D model of the house on the table. That's going to save me an enormous amount of time. So then, when I go to a VC and I say, "Oh yeah, my killer app," sure, it's going to be you know one of those two options, and that's what's going to do risk the thing for you. I don't like that answer because I think there's so many guys and girls in this in this gaming conference that have so much better and cooler ideas than what than the two I've just cited, and I just want to open the platform for them to be able to create AR games. So, do you do you think that the the big ideas are are going to come from the independent game developers, or or do you think what's going to happen are the big companies are going to say, "Whoa, this is this is the future. Let's let's grab hold." My sort of take home message I guess is you need those young folks to start the revolution and you need a certain degree of independence uh, from the big big companies to really make the dent that you want so my my belief is that a company like uh, Google who's created a you know 30,000 engineer company structure based on delivering ads in an efficient way or delivering search in a beautiful and efficient way can change their mission statement so easily to do something that is completely revolutionary and different. I think that for that you really need a group of young and passionate people and I think that um, history has shown that over and over again. So Oculus had to start with Palmer and Palmer had to continue being the guy that's pushing it and that's, that's, that's bringing more people to that circle and you know I Hope the same will happen for augmented reality for selfish reasons. Okay, excellent, excellent. Now, uh, for I mean, obviously our audience, we have a lot of independent game developers, and actually the more deep, you know, the the bigger companies yeah. as well that follow us too. Um, you know, what do you, it, do you have a, a software development kit? Is there anything game developers can do to, to help you along? Absolutely, absolutely. So, we're creating this for you. Unity 3D, the most popular game engine in the world. And the reason we're doing that is because, you know, game developers everywhere are so adept at this. How, most of the people upstairs right now are Unity devs. With the most minimal experience in Unity, you could get on, get your hands dirty with our SDK that shows you the hands, the positions of the hands, the walls, anything you need to make an awesome game in no time. So. Yes, the game developers are a huge component in this, and my entire business plan is really centered around them. What can I say? Excellent, excellent. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you, so you should much. you should take the glasses off. People should see what you look like too. There you go.
Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much.